in this video we will be enumerating the processes and threads from the kernel mode in the kernel mode we can take advantage of e process structure to enumerate all of the processes and threads e process structure contains active process rings at the offset 448 hexadecimal so this is a circular double linked list it contains two values a pointer to the next e process structure and the pointer to the previous e process structure so you can see the arrows going to the next e process structure and the next e process structures backward ring pointing to our e process in the same way and goes on so this will populate a circular double linked list so from the e process offset at 448 if you can read the first 8 bytes it will contain the address of the active process rings of the next e process so if you read this contents and subtract this 448 again you will receive you will reach at the e process for the next process there you can read the process id or image file name etc in the same way you can continue from the e process of the second process you can try to read the contents at the 448 offset and this will use me the active process rings address of the next e process and if i subtract 448 i will get to the starting of this e process and so on that's how we enumerate the processes coming to the threads we have the thread list head at the 5e0 offset so thread list head contains two values pointing to the uh, e thread structures so the forward ring can points to the e thread of the first thread in that process and it will point to the thread list entry uh, structure of the e thread so this thread list entry is the 4e8 offset from e thread so what this mean is you need to read the 8 bytes from the thread list head and subtract this 4e8 to get to the starting of this e thread and again from this e thread you will have the thread list entry the forward ring so this points to the thread list entry of the next e thread and if you read this contents and subtract 4e8 you will get to the next e thread and again so on go to the thread list entry read 8 bytes subtract 4e8 you will go to the next e thread and at the last e thread the forward link points to the active process rings of the e process so if you take the e process address and add 5v0 and sorry 448 and that is the value so 5v0 that is the value it is pointing to sorry the arrow mark should be uh, down my bad and there we go the thread list head will be pointed by the last e thread let's see this in the windows debugger so let's read the e process structure of the explorer.exe process and active process links so at the 448 offset we have this active process links and also remember these offset changes from windows version to version so the first pointer you have the forward ring and the backward ring and the forward ring points to the active process links of the next e process so that means we need to subtract this 448 from the this value and then we get the e process for the next process so you can verify that by reading the image file name and you can see there is a valid image file name svchost.exe and in the same way you can try to enumerate the third process as well
so and so on so in this way we can enumerate all the processes so let's go and code for enumerating processes for now later we will see how to enumerate the threads here i am already getting the e process for my current process that is system.exe let's create a new variable our e process so our e process points to the system.exe e process so we are going to loop all of these values of the e process <coughs> and we need to stop at one point so we will be stopping after all the enumeration is done so how to check if all the enumeration is done is by coming to this very first starting point so starting point is our own e process address that's why we are storing the e process in a variable now we are going to loop over to enumerate the processes we can try to print the process id as well or we can print the image file name so that would be better and image file name is an array of 15 bytes and at the offset of 5a8 we are going to read the 16 bytes from this address even though it is only 15 bytes we are going to read 16 bytes and put the 16th byte as a null byte and we are go we can go and and print this file name so we are putting the null byte at the end of the file name now we have printed the process name we can go ahead and try to read the contents at this 448 offset e process press 448 read the 8 bytes and here if you want to get to the next e process remember we need to subtract this 448 because this address is pointing to the active process rings of the next e process and then now we compare if this e process is same as our e process then we are going to break so i think we are good to go
and we can see we have printed all the image file names of all the processes now let's go and see how to enumerate the threads let's view the contents of the thread list head so the thread list head is at the offset 5v0 from the e process and it contains forward ring and backward ring let's also examine the e thread structure and the member thread list entry it is at the offset of 4e8 so this address is pointing to this value of the e thread so if you want to go to the starting of the e thread you want to subtract this offset to get to the starting of this e thread and we can verify this by printing out the client id which contains the process id and thread id and uh, you can see 14cc is the process id for explorer.exe and 14cc is the unique process and the thread id is this one and we can also observe that the cid client id is at the offset 478 and from here at the offset of 8 we have the thread id so we need to add these two values to get to this unique thread 478 hexadecimal plus 8 and in the backward ring of our thread list head we have the last e thread address so we will be base based upon this one we are going to stop the enumeration so we go on an infinite loop and if the e thread matches our backward ring e thread then that means we have reached the end of the threads in our process so let's go and let's go and write a loop let's say this as last e thread is equals to so how you are going to read the last e thread by reading this backward ring from the thread list head so the thread list head is at the 5v0 offset and in here there is a one element uh, and th this is the second element in the structure so we need to add plus 8 to this 5v0 so e process plus 0x 5v0 plus 0x8 so you would read this value and we need to subtract the 4e8 to get to the next e th the last e thread so now we have the value of the last e thread now we can go ahead and loop through the all the e threads and print out the thread ids so let mute e thread value is equals to so we are going to read this value from the thread list head, the starting forward ring and is at the offset of 5v0 and we can subtract the 4e8 value to get to the starting of this e thread and here we are going to print out the thread id value so from from the starting of this e thread at the offset of 478 plus 8 you have the thread id and it is of the size 8 so 
in the kernel mode the ids are treated as a handle the process id and thread ids are treated as handle that's why you will see this void star so let thread id is equals to e thread plus 0x478 and plus 8 we can go ahead and put some tab space to identify that this thread belongs to this process thread id So now we have printed our thread ID. Now we need to compare our E thread is the last E thread or not. So if our E thread is the last E thread, then we are going to break. Otherwise, we are going to move forward. So how we are going to move forward is reading the again thread list entry. So be careful in the starting thread list head is at the 5e0 offset but the thread list entry in the ethered is at the offset 4e8. So we need to read this value not at the 5e0. 5e0 is only for starting of the head value. ethered press. 4e8 and subtract the 4e8 to get to the starting of the c thread and then we are printing the thread id and checking if it is the last e thread or not so i think we are good to go let's go and compare our driver and we can see we have printed all of the processes and thread ids it might take time because we have to enumerate all of the threads so so that's all for this video in this video we have successfully enumerated all the processes and the threads uh, belonging to the processes using the e process and the e thread structures